right, good evening all. I am uh, messing around here with the, uh, the foam can that's getting set up. I have to change the orifice on this one. So now, to add more insult to injury, now we have three foam cans. One for the brake buster, one for pre-wash, and one for the regular wash. So, GSF, touchless, and brake buster. So that's what we're going on. So I need to put a 1.5 millimeter orifice on my foam can. What I was doing for a little while was I was doing touchless, with a belt hammer touchless, in a, um, or with one pressure washer, but again, I have the dual setup. Uh, what I found is I get pretty close to a proper panel impact ratio if I just go really fast. Just get the car covered, do it quickly. So, it's been a while since I did any, did all the assembly or did some assembly. The beginning of OG, my dad and I did all this. Most of my dad and I helped sometimes. And then it was my dad and Ted. Now it's going here. I think I did it in the first place. I did. Well, now I'm going to the correct side. So inside of the foam can here, is where we have a orifice. So there is a 1.25 millimeter orifice. You see that in there, those flats? Turn it this way, Dumbo. And uh, I just turn it and take it out. Looks correct. Yep, this one's a little bigger. So here's what it looks like out of the camera. See this little guy? So this little guy goes in here. Been meaning to do this for a long time, finally getting it done. And of course, I forgot to bring the Mosmatic plugs. So this is a Mosmatic plug quarter inch plug. So I just keep chipping away at getting this garage dialed. I finished my little utility drawer with tool grid the other day. I'll show that to you in a minute. I'm working on my, as you can see all my screwdrivers here, I'm down to 87 screwdrivers. Actually I just made a video, that video is on the, on the channel today. But now I have to stare at them for a while and figure out which ones I actually want. I'm thinking if they all stay here, maybe I want them all. I don't know. We'll see. I placed my has that order, so I'll start playing with that. And then I figure later this week, maybe next weekend, I'll start digging into the Knipix catalog and just keep working through. Now I have my three foam cannons set up. I actually purposely set up the foam can for the 1.25 for a single pressure washer. But I'll show you when I pre-wash the, the way that I'm doing it. Who says I don't use tools? The other thing I wanted to change out, the other thing I wanted to change out was this rusty old, this must be a really old foam cannon head because it has the non-stainless little screw, so I brought the little screw with me to swap that. So let's see if my fancy little kit here, three millimeter, nice. And I can take my little ratcheting handle 
clip here. Nope, wrong size. Dang, this one must be really old. So much for checking that off the list. I just have to get a new foam cannon head. I think this may be. There's a good chance this is my original foam cannon. So I'm working on my Weira drawers here, getting these suckers organized. I'm gonna do, once I get this stuff figured out, I'm gonna start doing some foam, custom foam inlays. I'm just kind of working on what I might want or not want. So check out this drawer here since we're over here together. This is now tool gridded. I have a little space to add some stuff if I wanted to. Um, but these will probably all go away, this kind of Klein stuff here. Um, yeah, I've got a lot, of, a lot of tape measures. Tape measures are uh, something that, I just have one on each side they make. So I have a bunch of different, you know, metric and regular and 40, there's a 45, let's see, 40, 40 foot, 35 foot, 30 foot, 25 foot, uh, 26 slash 8 meters, so that's the 8 meter version, 16 feet, and this is the 5 meter. So I have metrics, SAEs, and then the three bigger sizes with the 100 foot tape. So it seems logical to me. And then different types of cutters, so you have fixed blade, you have two different versions of retractable blade, and then I just have two of these because I'm always looking for a box cutter it seems. So and two different pairs of scissors, a short and a long, an angled and not angled. I don't know, it seems logical to me. Everybody's just giving me a hard time on Instagram. Maybe not everybody, but some people. Got my levels back there. And then this is the new, the new six inch. So these are little six inch squares, which is easier to ship. Costs a lot less to get it to you. You don't have to cut as much. It's way easier to do. I'm sure there's a lot of piddling going on here by me <laughs> before I even get to washing the darn car. So this is my first, very first wash of the Rooster car. It's pretty dirty. Um, I mean, I haven't washed it yet. It sat at the dealership for a while, so it uh, had a real problem in that the battery went dead, and then the darn car blew up. You know, the suspension module. It, it uh, somehow the, the, when the battery went dead, the, the car. Through all kinds of errors, it couldn't reset them. It turned out the suspension control module was fried, and so I had to have uh, Porsche Vocala. They had, they had it for like a month, three weeks or something like that. But explicit instructions not to freaking touch it. I got a lot of friends up there, so they knew to keep an eye on the car and not mess with it. So we're about to find out how the car looks. So I haven't washed it after polishing and all that, so um, of course it went down to Ryan at Auto Paint Guard and got the Expel done. GSF here, wherever that is. There it is. Knocked out of the park, and then 
you guys that are building garages are going to want to, I mean, they're super expensive to get, but the shipping and everything, but I think it's worth every penny to get the right one. Otherwise, you got to screw up and buy a bunch of countertops like I have, or just deal with the fact that you bought a countertop or had a countertop made that wasn't exactly what you wanted. That, to me, is not a real viable solution for you guys. You might as well leverage my pain and suffering. I like all the prep work before washing. I like the filling up bottles and piddling with stuff more than I like the washing part. I like the washing part a lot. So we've been doing more work on figuring out adhesives. Bottles. So hopefully we can get that figured out. It'd certainly be nice. Bryce has all kinds of test cases he's working on. I still hasn't been very responsive about trying to reach a, uh, an end point here. Like, hey guys, uh, it's time to kind of make these things work. So, what are we going to do about this? The owner of Pressel came and visited. The owner is going to execute on fixing the things that you want fixed. So, Is ready. So I have, don't get too excited yet, but I have my sample of Breakbuster Light coming. So a lower pH version of Breakbuster that Dave Phillips has been working on. I'm interested to see how uh, Bradley's uh, wheel armor wheel coating does for me here in a minute. I got the bike stop out like two weeks ago. I was beginning to wash my bikes, so I promise I'm going to make a video on that here soon. Pressure washer set up and ready to go. The dual Krenzel setup is the way to go, man. I've been uh, washing with the setup at HQ, which is really nice. That's the KWS 700. But this is much better because other than all the things I've talked about, redundancy and all that stuff, which is really nice, having two different machines. But the, the coolest part about it is that the sort of the initial pressurization, oh, I can get rid of this too because I finally got the right tips. I got my new tips. The little pink mark with blue mark on it. See that blue mark there? So that way. Know where the fan is. I just have to figure out which one's 25 and which one's. I think that one on the flat is 25. So I have a 7.5 Orvis nozzle. So no water on. Pressure washing on. So higher end pressure washers and some low end ones. Maintain pressure. So right now, these are pressurized right, you know, right around 1400 PSI. So there's 1400 PSI sitting on the line right here. And then we're getting like 4.2 gallons per minute. keeps that 1400 PSI sitting in the gun right now, right here, ready to go. Well, the big boy, the 20 millimeter pump, the KWS 700 that I have in the garage, uh, that one holds from 3,000, 2,800 PSI sitting right here. And so when you pull the trigger, you get this big kick, which makes it not as comfortable, not as great of a user experience as this is. So this to me, I'm convinced, no matter how high in the garage I build in the future, I'm gonna do the dual Krenzel setup, not the single, not the single big pump. It's quieter, it turns off when you release the trigger, you have redundancy, so 
your machine won't go down. So it's basically a win across the board doing the dual brush. So I still don't have much of an assessment on the 991 or the 992. I've driven it all back a lot. I got it back not too long ago here. I've just slowly been driving it a little bit here and there. I'm still struggling a bit with my ability to go out and drive, not wanting to mess it up. You know, I spent so much money on this thing and then so much time into it that you know, it's just kind of stressing me out a bit. So I'm not wanting to take the darn thing out. But it has gotten, again, super dusty, dirty here, being uh, at the dealership. And I have driven it you know, like 100 miles or so since, um, since getting it back. I need to find the car cover for it. But anyway, that whole, uh, this whole concept, or this whole, not concept, but problem of me having trouble with panic attacks driving, uh, the E36 is going to go in the giveaway here. So once the giveaway starts, you know, I can't really be driving the car around because if it cra crash the darn thing, I'd be out. I'd have to return everybody's money. It would be a total disaster. Yeah, this coating is pretty good, man. The 997 I can't be driving around. The E36 right now is down. So we took the sunroof out, fixing the sunroof. I'm only supposed to tear the dash apart on Monday to get all of the lights changed in, all the bulbs, because a few of the bulbs are out, so we're just changing all of them. Three to four months for a normal 
rational human, right? So I've put in
So the logic would be this, you know, find a car, 40, 50,000 bucks. You know, my definition of beater has changed quite a bit. I mean, you know, I don't think I've ever, I've never really had a beater before, but my definition of a car, that would be a daily car. Scoff at the idea of a you know forty fifty thousand dollar car being here, but when you're dealing in you know when you have a bunch of money in cars and then you make a living on cars, the definition changes quite a bit. So and hopefully that change, that definition continues to evolve. And I hope it changes for all of you too as time goes on. You uh, you know have some more money, have some more savings, have more success, have some better. So I started looking, you know, everything is like 100, 200,000 miles and I don't want that. I want something with like 8,000 miles. So I was telling Tommy about that, talking about it, and he said, why don't you look at Vivos? And so then I just did a simple Google, so I started checking bring a trailer. I'm like, what are the best Vivos? What are the best STIs? You know, all the low, low miles, like unicorn low miles. What are they selling for? Have there been any that haven't been in? I couldn't find any STIs, but I did find a couple of one Evo, like 800 miles, and went for like, I think it's an Evo 9, went for like 90K last year. I'm like, that's what I want. I don't know that I spent 90K, I don't want to spend 90K, but yeah, I'm supposed to be looking for a beater. Not that I don't care about. Not that I don't care. I want something that I don't care as much about because I care a lot about this car and about my E92. Say so whatever you want about it, I care a lot about them and, and that stresses me out. And guess what I find? So I find the opposite of the beater. I find a darn unicorn. 1900 mile Evo 8, so it's 05. And uh, I make the mistake of making the call. So I called the dealer, so I the story. I find out it was a, one of their long term you know, Mitsubishi. Super fan customers. He um, he bought the car, kept it, collected it. He had a bunch of them. Has a bunch of three thousand BP. Big Mitsubishi fan. And so, sold it to the owner of the dealership uh, to pay for college <laughs> for his kid. Today I uh, 
find the bill of sale and order the car and the car should be here probably maybe next week. Bubba's going to get it for me. It's in Illinois. Uh, just so happened that Mike was off delivering a car that he got for his daughter and she lives near there and uh, it just so happened that that car that I called on was like 20 minutes from where he was. So he went and put eyes on it. Things were perfect. It has original battery, original fluids, original plugs, original tires, original brakes. Totally original. And you know what Uncle Maddie's going to do? <laughs> I'm going to tear it apart. Just like I did on my United And put all kinds of cool stuff on it. And then we'll see. We'll see what, what I do with it. I'm not buying it with the intention of doing a giveaway with it. Like the 997RS I bought to do a giveaway. The 1M I bought to do a giveaway. The M5 I didn't buy to do a giveaway. The, the Civic SI I bought to do a giveaway. The M2 CS I bought to do a giveaway. Um, and so the uh, E36 I bought to keep, but I'm going to do a giveaway on it because I feel complete. Uh, it just depends. So the only thing that isn't really working out is that the Evo's front, front bumper is a little lower, so that doesn't help me. So maybe we'll keep the car up a little higher. So that way I can pull off the side of the road if I need to. And hopefully, maybe this trial works and gets me back on the road and drop wherever I want to get. That would be awesome. If not, I bought a really cool Evo and I'm going to get to make lots of friends and make, get lots of new people following along and do all kinds of fun stuff. This is a win no matter what. Get our buckets ready. Pull this out of the way. I do like dealing with the hose on uh, Swiss traps. It's uh, super smooth. Yeah, so my plan with the, uh, the Evo. Stupid cars 
driving around with laptops in the front seat, and nothing ever works. It's always broken, sliding around all over the place, things are always breaking on the car. Like, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? If you guys are watching this, why do you, why do, you do that? You don't have the resources, the time, the money to be doing that to a car. And you end up driving around a Honda Accord everywhere because your freaking Evo doesn't work. Just build it until it works. That car needs like 350 horsepower, not 800. It's dumb. I mean, if it worked, great. If it takes so much money. Deep into my tool chase. That's been a lot of fun. Buying tools. I'm supposed to be buying tools, I'm supposed to stop buying cars, but for me, emotionally, personally, business wise as well. It's not, you know me, I'll figure out a way out. It's not fun, or not as, if it's not as fun as I was hoping, 
then uh, I'm not going to beat myself up over it anymore. I'm just going to do something else. Come on. You know, I live like a rational human instead of like a crazy person. It's a way better way to live. And I don't think I'm just telling you that. I don't think I'm just making that up. I think I'm like actually believing it. Like, it's actual. I'm like, I'm, I'm actually telling you and me the truth here on this the present thing. So I can give me self-help advice that I'm not practicing. You know what I'm saying? That's a, uh, that's a new thing for me. It feels good. Oh, by the way, tomorrow, I'm going to probably put this video will be up on Sunday. So tomorrow, Monday, if you're watching this on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the vacuum system's live, and it's legit. Like, it's better than I hoped it would have been. So, I think the vacuum system, much like the Krenzler stuff, will improve over time. I think we'll find things to add to it, make it better. But it is a complete solution. I felt like I had plenty of time with it. I have one installed here with the hydro system that you've seen. I have one installed at Helen on the wall in a horizontal fashion. We did it in a vertical fashion install at the GHQ. And then we did a secondary vertical install with it above the hose reel instead of below the hose reel to see how that works. And so we've done an attic type mount like we've done here. We've done a Regular when you're new here. This is the booster car. I've got all my towels set up here, so the, from the bottom there, so I put my dirty towels and all my towels set up here. And then I'm washing over here. Gosh, it's got uh, 18,000 BTU mini slips. It's a little undersized for this. That way it does a little better job of being bit of mine. What's up, Mr. Eva man? Yeah, I'm going back to Hot Boy. <laughs> so, let me ask you this. If we transition to the wheel coating, can you, uh, can you like, make lots of it? Uh, yeah, it depends. I mean, I don't know how much you're selling right now, but, I mean, we, we can get, you know, we can get quite a bit of it. Yeah, um, I don't know how much I'm selling either. <laughs> I have to ask somebody else that. Um, yeah. But I mean, realistically, like, what I don't want to do is get in a situation where I'm recommending a wheel coat and I don't freaking have any of it, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, and, and, you know, we would, risk, you know, respect you too and make sure that, you know, if, even if we didn't have it, we would make sure you had it first. And, yeah. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, but, I mean, like, right now we have like over 250 bottles of it. You know, I, I don't know how much you're selling, but. You know, you can always, uh, I guess, you know, start, start, you know, if you wanted to do it, you know, obviously, you start with it and still keep, you know, your other option around, you know, for, for yeah. now, because, you know, I'm sure there's, you know, some people that are going to want options, um, and then, you know, just kind of see how it goes from there. Yeah, I don't like people to give people options. They don't, they need to just listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody should just always listen to me. I steer them down the right path, generally. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so yeah, I love it, man. It's uh, it's 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 you're right. You know, it's it's tacky, it's sticky feeling, but that's necessary for the you know for the hardness, for the heat, you know, heat, yeah. the, the heat retention or ability to overcome heat. And then you know, it's the water behavior is great. So yeah, uh, the way it cleans, the way the way it cleans up is is pretty yeah. game changing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like like you know, like you said that. Yeah, well, 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 I always tell people that, you know, that, that, that using it, like you say, you know, you've got an hour longer installing it where it's just, you know, it's going to be a little sticky and it might be a little harder than you're used to, but then you're going you're gonna to benefit of, you know, two years of, you know, it just being awesome. Yeah. All right, that's a wrap. Car looks good. I'm going to tomorrow I'm fresh. I'm going to work on, there's just some, some polished splatter in here on this plastic piece, so I'm going to have to get it on brush out. And uh, dig into it with M39 because it's uh, it's kind of white and goopy, and I can see it coming from outside. But 
Anyway, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Um, we'll wash the ducks come out. We need to wash the E92 again. Uh, actually, all the cars we need to get washed. So um, I'll probably over the next you know three or four weeks. Uh, I'm going to get into the Rivian here too soon, so we'll be doing the Rivian full detail. Anyway, thanks for uh, thanks for being here as always. Stay tuned for more crazy. I'll uh, see you soon.